You saw the thumbnail. You saw the title. Let's get at it. Today, I want to look at the podcast, the Torre podcast from the Grio. On his show recently, he had Ebony K. Williams. Ebony K. Williams has stirred up quite a bit of kerfuffle because she said things such as she wouldn't date or she would not be interested in dating a bus driver unless he owned the bus. Um, she also said that she's also been pinned in saying that uh, women, black women should seek to get married while they're in college. And then of course, countless other things. She's an attorney from New York. She's extremely well accomplished. She's a, a power broker, if you will. And she's on the Torre show, just kind of talking about her life, talking about where she is and what she's been doing. And a lot of the conversation was around marriage and parenting. So I wanted to take the time to look at what they're saying there, maybe compare it to scripture and see if we can make a little bit of heads or tails. So with no further ado, let us bring it in. And let's go. On Torre show. Ebony, go ahead and turn. Are we rolling? How are you? <laughs> I am feeling good in this moment, and that's where I'm at in life, Tori. I'm taking it moment by moment. Are you happy? I'm happy in this moment. That's such a weird answer. I mean, I'm not mad at her. I mean, I'm happy in this moment too, but I wouldn't. I have to say, yeah, I'm happy. It, it's almost like she's deliberately, intentionally not saying that she's not happy. But rather, I'm happy in this moment. So right now, while I'm talking to you, I'm happy. But you can easily surmise that, well, you're not happy when you're not right here with me in this moment. This seems odd. But let us continue. What about in general? I am as happy in this moment as I have been overall in life. Okay. Like meaning like professionally, my relationship with my mother, my relationship with my really tight friends, they're better today than they've ever been. And I think that's something that feels like something to be really happy about. There's some things that could be better. Like what? My okay. Well, we're gonna let her catch that. Now, I do want to give a heads up. I did um because of copyright, I did condense a lot of this down because there was a lot of stories in this. And it was a very long, it was an engaging interview, but it was there was a lot of stories, lots of um, there's a little bit of profanity in there as well. So you'll probably see that I've cut that out. But um, let's go because she's gonna talk about why where she is and uh, what's making her happy. Fertility journey could be going easier, but you know, it's called a journey for a reason. You want to have a baby. Yeah. You are working on that now? Mm -hmm. You are. What have you been trying? <sighs> well, I am in my IVF journey, so I am preparing for my embryo transfer. It's the second week in November right now. In a perfect world, I would be pregnant as we speak. We had a little bit of a estrogen protocol. It, you know, without getting into the minutia, I am still trying to get on first base with my actual embryo transfer. But I have an embryo that is healthy and in waiting, and I'm looking forward to transferring You have an it. embryo that's waiting for you. Yes. And you're you're good. Like, you're ready to, like... I wish I was pregnant yesterday. Yeah, and you can be wow. pregnant, and you're going to be great. Thank you. Right? I don't know. Are you the doctor, Negro? I'm not a doctor, <laughs> Negro. All right. Got to jump in here real quick. I'm finding it very interesting how how flippant we are, especially the highly melanated people. Ebony K. Williams is not married, and so she wants to be a single mother. She's deliberately seeking to be a single mother. I'm just finding it how interesting it is that we're quick to celebrate that. We're quick to really just green light that when we know that that's not the best way for children to be raised. And without even having talking from the scriptures. That's just not the way that the best way for children to be raised, especially those of the highly melanated content. I, I'm just finding it weird that Torre is perfectly fine with that. But in the same breath, he'll be talking about racism and systemic this and that and all these other oppressions. But this is an oppression that we're exacting on ourselves by celebrating single mothers like that. Intentionally, intentionally, she's seeking to be a single mother. But let us continue. <laughs> yeah, it's We're going to have fun. Tori. I'm Come excited. On. I'm excited too. I mean, you're a father of two. Your yeah. kids are tweens? Almost 16 and 14. Okay, no, so pure teens. Yeah. Um, what do you wish someone would have told you about parenting 
that you know now that you didn't know before they were conceived? No. Try to say yes as much as mm. possible. Including yes to the children. No, I mean like to the children. Like say uh, yes uh, to yeah. almost everything. That's shocking for me to hear, by the way. I was not raised in a yes. So I just want to put up on the screen Proverbs 22, 6. Train up a child in the way that he should go. Even when he is old, he will not depart from it. A lot of us realize, and I think that's a double edged sword. If we train them up in the proper way, they won't depart from that. But on the same note, if we train them up in the wrong way, it's the exact same thing. It's hard to change somebody once they've been taught bad. Saying yes to your children all the time, Tori, I just don't believe that you really mean that. I just don't believe it. There's just entirely too many. Now, he's going to say, you don't want to be just no, 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 which I understand most parents are not. But there are a lot of things. The child is not a good governor of his or her surroundings and what's the right thing to do. They need you as a parent to give them direction. I'm going to let them continue, but you'll see what I mean. Yes, household. You did. I was not. You were not. You were I not. was not raised in a household where you were so much allowed to speak. I was raised in the South by a super strong single black mother. And I think of our, if I can say our generation, kids were seen and not heard. Right, 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 right. right. Be right, quiet, right. Uh -huh. right? Like you are subservient mm -hmm. or you are, you are sub the adults. A thousand percent. Right. Your whole, your whole existence is based on deference. The generation mm -hmm. uh, now can be like, I want to be your friend mm -hmm. or can be like what some would mischaracterize as gentle parenting, mm -hmm. but like from the beginning, the kids get to be human. Try yeah. to say yes to them as much as possible. I like that. Why? But why? And again, I, I, I'm, I'm removing the, the serious, uh, cause he's going to say like, don't let say no. When the kids put his hands on the stove, I agree. But why say yes to them for everything? The world doesn't do that. The world doesn't give them a yes for everything that they do. The world tells them no. So why give them, set them up for, set them up for defeat by telling them yes to everything? That makes no sense. And I, I really want to back that up just in taste to make sure I'm not missing it. Right. Your whole your whole existence is based on deference. The generation mm -hmm. uh, now can be like. I want to be your friend mm -hmm. or it can be like what some would mischaracterize as gentle parenting, mm -hmm. but like from the is. beginning, the kids get to be human. Try yeah. to say yes to them as much as possible. I like that. Tori. I mean, I, I don't, you don't, you don't need like parenting that. does not require you to be like, don't do that. Don't do yeah. that. Don't do that. Yeah. So, and I feel like that's like giving them a lot of, the the but that is parent. No, there, there's, this doesn't work. And to to be willy-nilly about it in the world that we're currently in, we have children who've never heard the word now. And look at what happens to them. I, I, I'm really surprised that a black man is like, Read, even if they are, quote, unquote, making a mistake, mm -hmm. like, and we're not talking about touching the stove, but I'm talking right. about like, all the like just picking wrong fr like you know what i mean do whatever yeah. they're okay. gonna they're gonna figure it out things will go outside the lines yeah. and they'll be fine they'll be fine i like but they won't though what if they're not and you've let them go outside the lines and they're not gonna be fine they do pick the wrong friends they do make a really really boneheaded decision that is not a bounce back decision what about that or you've given them so many yeses that you're, they're now well outside of the lines for you to even be able to tell them no when they do something wrong. Th this doesn't work. Like that. So let set, try to say yes to them as much as possible. As much as you can. Thank you. And Tom. I think giving them that freedom mm -hmm. builds self esteem. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. and I think when you have self esteem and self belief mm -hmm. and an internal, because a lot of your internal voice comes from what your parents say to you. Sure. And if your internal voice, I no, I, my internal voice does not come from what James or Belinda said to me. That's not true. They guided me and gave me really clear directions, but my internal voice is informed by the word of God and the people around me that have mentored me and trained me. My parents help, but they're not, they're just one of a chorus of voices that you, you hear an internal part of an internal voice when you're making decisions.
I mean, now, when I anything related to a car, yeah, I do kind of think about my dad. Okay, but yeah, but there's even things I've learned about cars that my dad didn't teach me. Come on, man. Is I can, I can, I can, mm -hmm. rather than I can't, mm -hmm. which is some people's internal, right? Yeah. Then you will be propelled more, I think. Lovely. Thank you. I think your, I feel like your internal voice is like, I can do anything. So either Torah is right or scriptures are right. So Proverbs 29, 15 says, the rod of reproof gives wisdom, but a child left to himself brings shame to his mother. Now, either this is true or Torah is true, but both of them can't be true at the same time. And it's, being left to himself sounds a whole lot like being told yes to everything. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I misunderstand. But let's go. It is. But <laughs> I will say based off of, and I love this dialogue already, it came later in life than probably most would think because I was raised in such a see and not be heard way. Now, that said, what she did do really well alongside that was model, Badass. I can do anything, yes. So while I wasn't executing, I can do everything at nine or 12 or a even that's 18, I, that's what I was seeing. So much of what the kids get from the parents is seeing what they do, not like what you say to them mm -hmm. is secondary. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I saw a black woman that could do anything and be in conversation with anybody. And she I'm still I'm still a little perplexed. I wasn't planning on being this bothered by the say yes thing. Think about it. If I tell my child yes, they no longer have to even put their eyes on me. If I say yes, go play video games. Yes, you can stay up to whenever you want to go to sleep. Yes, you can eat whatever you want to eat out of the pantry. They no longer are looking at me. So if I say no, you cannot play video games. Well, what can I do? Do what I'm doing. I'm reading a book. No, you can't stay up to midnight. Do what I'm doing. I'm going to bed at 9, 30, 10 o'clock at night. No, you can't eat everything out of the pantry. Look what I'm doing. I've eaten my dinner. I've had a nice cup of water. I'm finished eating for the night. But if you tell them yes to everything, they no longer, they're actually no longer getting instruction. I, I just don't see that as being a very successful plan. But actually, that's not the worst bit of information to give. She kind of represented so many things that America and globally she wasn't supposed to. She's not, you know, formally educated in a collegiate way. She's not wealthy. She's not white. Gloria. And she is the most get your, can you curse on here? Sure. Most together woman you will ever meet in life. Um, and... That's all I, that's all I know. That's so. When it Ephesians 6, 4. Fathers, do not provoke your children to anger. But bring them up in a discipline and instruction of the Lord. I'm not saying that there's not cause and place for single mothers because Lord knows they're here and they're real. But you're going to see really clearly, fairly quickly that Ebony K. Williams has a very weird understanding of the roles of women, definitely the roles of marriage. And we've already heard now how she understands parenting. No friend. I mean, her mom did what she had to do and God bless her for that. But she needed a dad. It was my time when I got an opportunity to finally step into a voice of my own an, an occupation of space of my own. That was the only way I knew how to occupy space. Yeah, I, I I sense a lot of self confidence, and there's nothing wrong with being confident as a woman. I'm raising two teenagers right now, and there's nothing wrong with them being confident. Their mother um, exudes confidence. Their mother is very confident. My wife is a very capable and able woman, and my daughters have picked that up from their mom. Absolutely no problem with that. But they need guard. They need male guardrails because you're going to see in a moment. Ebony doesn't really have clear understanding of males' roles in the household. And you'll see that in a moment. Coming out of you. Mm -hmm. And some people derive self-confidence from, I did this. Mm -hmm. So I'm confident that I got a PhD, I published a mm -hmm. book, I work at such and such place. Mm -hmm. And from you, I get, I'm badass. 
I believe in me, the whatever, mm -hmm. you know, JD, whatever else. Sure. Yeah. I knew I was before mm -hmm. I got a law degree, before this happened. So the fact that I was able to, by proxy of her really smart life choices, getting us out of that terrain, uh, being a zealous educational advocate for me. So gifted and talented programs and, you know, lots of controversy there, but, but, the, but whatever was available to like a first class existence for American life was going to be available to me. And Gloria made sure of that. Um, so to her large credit, I wasn't, I was supposed to be pregnant and, mm. you know, I just wasn't supposed to be in the space. Mm. So by virtue of just being here, I've already kind of overperformed, yeah. I think is a lot of my feeling. So I'm playing with house money. The JD is house money. That's how you feel about yeah, your life. Yeah, the I'm writing ahead. the first book, the writing the second book, the being colleagues with you on the Grio, yeah. the having the daytime syndicated judge show, being the youngest judge on air right now, the being the historic first black woman to be on Real Housewives of New York. It's all house money, Tore. I've already won. Now give me the house. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And she's about to start getting into the whole You'll see in a second why I say she doesn't have a clear understanding of male and female roles in marriage. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Give it the house. Give it to her. Mm -hmm. So, yes, I've known you for a long time. Mm -hmm. When I saw the, <laughs> the, the bus driver mm -hmm. thing with Ianla Van Zant, mm -hmm. right? And what was Ianla initiated it, right? She asked you, mm -mm. How, did it, how did that? I saw Ianla on the Breakfast Club and she made a statement. And I'm paraphrasing, but not very much. Ayala Von Zant said, young black, no, not even young. A lot of black women today mm -hmm. are operating as men in skirts. Mm -hmm. My experience and my observation is that most women are men in skirts. Meaning that the way their presence, their being, the way we roll in the world it's very masculine mm -hmm. because we've been conditioned and programmed out of our feminines. And when I say, I don't mean feminist movement in the world, I want to be a fireman or a football player. I'm talking, <laughs> about, <laughs> I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about how to be a woman in your being. Mm -hmm. What is the distinction between feminine power and masculine power? And we've been conditioned and trained to be men in skirts. We do everything like men. We compete like men. We, you know, m I said this on the R spot a few weeks ago. I said, most women want their boyfriend to act like their girlfriends, you know, chatting, shopping. But when the man comes home, what they meet is another dude. And I, I want to stop right there. I, I cannot agree with Ayana. Van Zant more. That's exactly the problem. We're not teaching our young ladies to complete men, but rather to compete with men. Ask yourself, is would Ebony K. Williams be willing and able to submit to a husband like we see in scripture? We're going to look at that in a second. Ephesians uh, 5, 22 through 33. Would Ebony K. Williams be able to do that? Would she be able to submit to a husband? Ask yourself that. Or what she's gonna literally tell you that she's trying to compete with her husband. She literally says it. So, but ask yourself, like, would she be able to shift gears and, and behave like a wife? What do you know? I I don't know what that means. You said you don't know what that means? No. I oh, know. I know exactly what she meant, Torres. What, what she meant what she meant was, and she did expound. Basically, she's saying women. And I'm putting my hand in the air. I, you know, what they say, uh, you know, hit dog holla. I was hit. <laughs> I was like, oh, this one's for me. Dr. Von Zant says women today are so preoccupied mm -hmm. by building and protecting and providing and making the money and being the boss and being overeducated and overemployed and all of that, that they're too busy occupying spaces that are traditionally for men. And okay. so while we look feminine we've got our lashes and we've some of us have our bbls and all of the things i'm just you know that's what you're saying and our bomb on our our uh christian louboutins aesthetically we present feminine but in terms of core values and how we show up in the world we are masculine we are providing we are building we are taking care of versus uh, relaxing into our feminine energy 
and being taken care of. So instead of being taken care of, we are taking care. Mm -hmm. And she was challenging us uh, to do better as women. Uh, I think uh, uh, Ayana Von Zant was right on the money. That I mean, that is a very true statement. And I, I don't think, I think in her attempt to agree with Von Zant, Ebony K. Williams missed the point that, and, and you're going to see in a moment what I mean by that. She missed the whole point of that, what she said, even though she articulated very clearly, she missed it. And the implicit thing is you're only going to get a man when you're in your feminine energy. Correct. Correct. That is and not I what she would... said. No, 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 no. The man that you want, it's not that you're just, you're never going to get a man. That's a false dichotomy. No, Ebony K. Williams will get a man. No question about it. She will get a guy. No, no problem there. It's the man that she gets. Is it the man that she wants? Therein is the problem. Therein is the rub. It's not a matter of, will she get a man? That's, that's not what Van, Van Zant said. Is this the man that you want? that provides and protects and does all this, you're not going to get that type of man if you're acting like a man. It's not in disagreement. And that hurt you? No, it's not. No, it didn't hurt me to Did you feel reflected in that comment? Absolutely. I felt like I was the exact type of woman Ayanla was referring to. Is that happening in your life, that men are repelled because you are as strong and as making as much money and well i don't know if they are repelled but i know i am repelled okay so here we go we're gonna we're making our way into the the bus driver conversation do men feel repelled because she has she makes all this money and do all, all this stuff let's just unpack that a little bit let's let her spread it out um, you are repelled <laughs> by i am repelled because i i feel challenged in meeting and partnering with a man that I feel can protect and provide for me as well as I can do for myself. So, um, women. I must stop right here. I got April jumps in and April's going to add another little layer to this or peel another layer off of this. But again, she said, I can already protect myself. Therein is the problem. What, what man you're doing, what a man needs to do. So therefore the man that you want does, isn't going to come to protect you because you're already saying you can protect yourself. So the man that you attract, Ebony K. Williams, will not be a man that's going to seek to protect you primarily. Of course, if they're walking down the street, he'll protect you. But that's not what you're looking for. You're looking for one that you that you know will protect you until the end. But let's let him let's let uh, April fill in and let's go. Bye. I am repelled because I I feel Back challenged in meeting and partnering with a man that I feel can protect and provide for me as well as I can do for myself. So, um, women who think like this and who have this mindset, they do end up buying a dog and dying alone. They do. And I, 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 I feel bad for them. I, I feel bad for them because it's, they've allowed the beauty of their youth mm -hmm. to be wasted and squandered on the shallow and the silly that's just a fact that's that's just a fact she could lose everything today right. and it won't make her any more or less attractive than she is now mm -hmm. because the shell of the woman that you see is empty and broken and she needs to have the approval and the applause of those out there, meaning the man with the power and the prestige and the money to compensate for all that she lacks. Mm. So April is pointing out that Ebony is doing these things because she herself lacks the self-confidence. She herself lacks the internal constitution to submit to a man, to submit to a husband. She's been married before. And when we look at um, Ephesians 5, ask yourself, is that what the relationship between a husband and wife should be? When we look at Genesis, you're going to ask yourself, is that the relationship that a husband and wife should have? They don't have a clue, Torrey nor Ebony, and Torrey is married. 
but Ebony doesn't doesn't have a clue, and Tori doesn't have a clue the importance of a relationship of, of the marital relationship. For crying out loud, even who initiated and started marriage, they have no idea. But let us go. Hmm. I can take care of myself. So why do I need you? No, I I would love to need you, but you have to overperform. See what I'm saying? Like like. Does he have to re- l- listen to what? Listen to the requirements that she's about to delineate for a possible husband. Retire you? No. Does he have to come in equal to you? He had to come in equal to me. And Ayanla's saying, well, if we as as these skirt wearing men, <laughs> if we relaxed off of doing, basically she's saying we're doing too much. But that's the truth though. If you're saying that a man has to meet you here, what is the purpose of him meeting somebody here that is already taking that you just said the man it needs to take care of you? But are you honestly going to lower yourself to allow him to take care of you and to provide for you and you be a homemaker? Are you you taking on a different type of role in the relationship? Tell the truth. Do you really think that's the case? Is that really what you're going to do? I don't think so. There's no reason for me to believe that she would be submissive to a husband who wanted to lead and direct the family in a certain direction. And she's going to say that very clearly. What she She's making the husband of her choosing. You'll see in a second. She's saying women today are doing too much. They are over-indexing and they are doing the traditional roles that men should be performing. So you continue. Okay. I kind of wish um, Ebony would stop saying women and say me. Because she said that Ivana, Ayana Von Zant was talking about her. I kind of wish Ebony would just take the ownership and say, yeah, this is what I'm doing. I think it would just be a, a different dynamic. Because it is true about her. That conversation on your Grio show. Yes, because I wanted to learn, right? My question to her. So what led to Bus Driver? Because I'm going to get there. She 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 says what she says. I says, Dr. Von Zahn, I find it fascinating. I don't disagree. I you are my and I, with full respect, elder, right? Sure. You are a veteran. Sure. Uh, I think Ayana's almost 70 years old, right? You are someone that I She's am in wise. a posture of learning from. Sure, right? sure, sure. Let's replay the clip that had some of y'all deep into your feelings. I do want you to speak, Ayanla, to how women need to I don't know, position ourselves so that we can be in our divinity, so we can have our crowns right, how we can create and not build when some of us, quite frankly, feel that the men that are available to us, and I'm talking about across the color spectrum, across. Okay, so here's part of the problem men that are available to us. Who is the one that actually, I'm just asking a question down in the comment section, who initiates? marriage. I know that sounds really weird, uh, uh, but who, which one, the man or the woman who initiates it? Just asking a question. Across the age spectrum. Trust me, I've done them all. Um, they are not positioned to protect nor provide because of some of the statistics we just talked about. They're not earning the incomes. They're not having the resources. And some of them are not even showing up in the leadership. And here we go. Would you date a bus driver? You. Would you date if a bus driver? If he owns driver? the bus. If he owns no. it. If he owns the bus. See, that's a problem. That's a problem. See, I wanted to talk about how do we close the game? Okay. I want to back up. Um, so you heard it. This is the infamous if he owned the bus comment. I think Ebony here in the red. I'm going to just back up just a little second. There we go. All right, I think Ebony here, when she came comes on, I really think she is engaging in some revisionist history because I watched the whole clip, and that's not what, she, what she's about to say in the red is not what she said. She meant this brother needs to own the Greyhound station. He can't be a Greyhound bus driver. He needs to own the MARTA. He needs to own MARTA. He needs to be you know, on the board of MARTA, not the bus driver. That's what she said. It's clear that's what she meant. When she said that to Von Zant. So now when she gets here in the red, 
I think she's trying to revise this this story because listen to what she says. See, I wanted to talk about how do we close the gap between black women who do show up in a so-called masculine posture, those of us that are providing and building and protecting due to circumstances that we might feel make us feel that if we don't do it for ourselves, we will have to go without the resources and protections we need to feel safe in this world. Then you are not going to attract the type of man that is going to protect you. You are not going to have two leaders. That's just the case of that's just reality. A two headed monster is a monster. You're not going to have a two headed leadership core. It's just not going to happen. And the reason I brought that up and asked, like, who initiates marriage? Let's look at Genesis 2 23. Then the man said, this at last is bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of me. And most Christians accept that this is the first institution of marriage, the first married couple. And this is, and notice who initiated the marriage decree. This man. God brought the man, the woman to the man, and man chose to marry her and call her his own. So Later on, we'll look at the um, we'll look at the the relationship as it relates to um, the husband leaving and cleaving and so on and so forth because they have some really goofy ideas about where marriage comes from, which is very weird. But let's let Ebony finish up here. But Dr. Ayanla went in a different direction. She asked me a personal question, and y'all know I have been extremely transparent about the fact that my life choices. And my chosen lifestyle are far outside of the norm. A, a lot of women, especially black women, and mm -hmm. I might get in trouble for saying this, but I will. In the in in our society right now, mm -hmm. black women are making a lot more money for the most part than yeah. black men. Right? There are a lot of black men who are successful, but for the most part, black women are making the money. So you, if you can find love, if that man works, you know, at whatever job, mm -hmm. and is a good man and is good to you mm -hmm. and honors and honors the house and honors his wife and does what he can. Mm -hmm. That's fine. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, but that's so hard for a lot of people to take in because that means, no, no, no. I need somebody to, who is, <laughs> I need, I, they need to make five times more and I got to have, the, I got to have, well, you uh -huh. keep, but go on, keep, keep, go on, keep your list, baby. Yeah. God, God bless you. Hope it happens. Go on, keep your list. <laughs> so when I, Okay, so I want to the reason I interjected Tyler Perry. One, because Ebony K. Williams actually, I think she throws some shade at Tyler Perry later on, and you'll hear it when she's talking to Torrey. But even more than that, notice what Tyler Perry says. Everything Tyler Perry says about the man are internal characters. He's good, he provides, he protects, so on and so forth. Nothing about his income. Everything Ebony talks about is external. Everything about it is external. He's got to make this amount of money. He's got to do this, that, and other. It's all outward facing. But the, what Tyler Perry said right there, I believe, is very inward. And it does coalesce. It does, in my opinion, even though I'm not a big Tyler Perry fan, I don't support a lot of the things that he does, but I believe that a broke clock can be right twice a day. He said a lot of things that I feel do represent what the scriptures teach about how a husband's relationship to his wife should be. I don't see anywhere in scripture that talks about an income or anything of that nature. It's almost like it's almost like a secondary thought. What's more important is what we're going to see in a moment as it relates to Ephesians. So it just seems really weird, but let's let Ebony finish up. I said that I would date the bus owner. A lot of y'all heard something different. Some of you heard the following. Bus drivers are whack. Bus drivers. Okay, so she 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 got a lot of pushback from this. And I think the pushback was a little bit aggressive. I ain't gonna lie. I, I side with Ebony K. Williams on this. I think some of the pushback, I don't think she said all that these people are saying. I just listened to the actual clip. She said she wanted to she wanted to date the bus owner, not the bus driver. There you go. That was it. I, I didn't all this stuff that they're gonna say to her, and she's recanting it. I mean, recounting it. I do think they were a little bit out of pocket. Drivers are broke. Oh, and I'm too good for a bus driver. The only thing is, y'all made that part up. See, I said what I said. But then some of y'all started talking about salaries and hourly wages, pensions and benefits. And that's wild because 
I was never talking about money at all. I was talking about black ownership, but some of y'all made it about money. I'm talking about ownership, black enterprise and entrepreneurship, because really I am talking about black liberation. And if you read my book, you'll understand why. So I'm standing 10 toes down on that position, and I don't really care if you're hurt or offended by it. And since some of y'all are already big mad, let me go ahead and make you incensed. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> she, I mean, bless her heart. I, hey, give it, give them the business. I don't think, I don't, I didn't get that she was talking about liberation or enterprise or black ownership. I did get that she wanted to date the, the, the bus company owner. I mean, now we can get into the fine details and she didn't say all that stuff about pensions and incomes and all that kind of stuff that was doing the most. But I don't think you said that, Ebony. Oh, come on now. So out of the 50,000 plus comments posted on social, I only saw a handful that even considered the possibility of a bus owner being a more aspirational position and recognizing that I am actually speaking and pouring into the ascension of black men when I said what I said. But see, no, some of y'all were too busy naming and shaming me personally and black women in general as undesirable gold diggers and much worse. Now, I suspect that some of y'all are the same men that were bringing home C's and D's on your report cards, only to then be coddled by parents that said, well, that's OK, as long as you're doing your best. Uh, so when uh, you say this, I don't know about that one. I think that might have been a little bit much. I think that might have been a little bit much. But, hey, I don't, I don't know about their grades. Just like I don't know if she really wanted ownership and liberation and all that kind of good jazz. You said you wanted to date the bus owner. That's what it is. But let's go, because I do want to talk about a little bit more about marriage. Let's go. I want to better understand, what do you recommend, woman to woman, elder to sure. mentee? Teach me, Ayanla, what should women like myself be doing when we are afraid? We are afraid, Dr. Von Zant, that if we don't, Go get it. Go to school. Go to more school. Yeah. Get all the degrees. Yeah. Get the big jobs. Make the two, three, five million dollars a year. Yeah. Buy the house, uh, which I have now done in Harlem, right? Buy my real estate. Ooh. Have my baby. Buy. If I don't do all of that, I am afraid, Dr. Von Zant, that I will be without it. Right. Because I'm not seeing enough evidence with right. my naked eyes right. of the quantity of men being able to step into that posture for me. Okay, I got back that up. Listen to everything that she's doing. What is a man actually supposed to bring to her? Like, like what realistically, I'm gonna back up just a little bit. What is what is a man supposed to actually bring to this equation? Like, just ask yourself if you're a man down in the comment section. What can you bring when she has this stuff? This I want to better understand. What do you recommend, woman to woman, elder to sure. mentee? I think Teach she told me, you. Ayanla, what should women like myself be doing? I think she told you. Teach me, tell me, all that kind of stuff. In my opinion, is just a waste of time. She's already told you what to do, and now it's a matter of do you want to actually do it uh, but w watch this again just watch this again and just tell me when we are afraid we are afraid dr von zahn that if we don't go get it go to school go to more school yeah. get all the degrees yeah. get the big jobs make the two three five million dollars a year yeah. buy the house uh which i have now done in harlem right buy my real estate Ooh. have my baby but if i don't do all of that i am afraid dr von zahn that I will be without it. Right. Because I'm not seeing enough evidence. With so all that stuff, the job, the degrees, she said the house, she said the baby too. What do you actually need a husband for? Like, what? what why do you even want a husband? I mean, what, what, I'm not even trying to be funny. Why would you even want one? It seemed like that would be a burden to you. And, and keep in mind also, I do think it's kind of funny She's she's a very um, driven, 
woman, how, how are you going to raise that child? How are you going to raise that child? Because you, you've she she delineates all the stuff that she's doing, and in the full video with Tore, they give more about all the stuff that she's doing. Like, how are you going to have time for a little human? Why do you even want a little human if you're doing all this stuff that that you're afraid that a husband is going to keep you from being able to do? Why do you even want a husband? Right. My naked eyes right. of the quantity of men being able to step into that posture for me. And I'm not going to be without. I'm going to just tell you, you know me a long time. You know, <laughs> I'm never going to be without. <laughs> there you go. So if a husband, why do you even need a husband then? It, it, she needs to just go ahead and say, I don't, I don't need a husband. I'm not looking. I am not out here looking for a husband. There, there's zero reason for her to even fake the funk, if you will. Why do you even fake the funk? You don't need a husband. At very best, you're going to need a nanny just to take help you take care of the baby. But the, what's the purpose of a, of a husband? So therefore, so therefore, I am afraid to trust what you are suggesting, which is if you wait, he will come. Right. If you do less, it will be provided for you. I want to believe that with everything in me, Torrey. I right. still want to believe that. And and that's kind of how I felt in that moment. Like, I, I hear you, Alon. Uh, uh, I hear you. Ayanla, and I want to believe in this man coming to save us yeah, as yeah. black women, but I've not seen I'm the not evidence seen of it. Not seeing not it. Not even in my own family. Right. Not even my own father. So then, okay. So as I said before, like she needed a dad. And, you know, she talks about during the full video, she talks about her mom being a single parent, so on and so forth. I mean, she has she has a very skewed view of marriage and of the marital relationship, the husband and wife dynamics. She has a she has a partnership. Uh, she, I mean, what she understands about marriage and the way they articulate it is more akin to like a a big law firm partner rather than a husband and wife relationship. And then she says, "Would you date a bus driver?" Would you date a bus driver? You. Would you date if a bus driver? If he owns the bus. <laughs> See, and you. I'm sorry. There's, there's no. There's, even looking at her body language, there's no reason for you to surmise anything different from that. But she meant exactly what we understood. He needs to own the bus. And I can see how people can. Look at that and say, ah, oh, and read into a little bit more than they needed to. I don't think we should have done that, but I mean, come on. Oh, Ooh, shit went left. Said, no, it didn't go left with that. Mm -hmm. It went left as far as making it into a cultural moment. Right. When you said, if he owned the bus. So you said, I took it left. I'm not saying left as a negative. Yeah. You that the response. It's a response. So it was, made wasn't the it, question. It was the question response. made it an interesting moment, mm -hmm. but the response then tapped into all these things that the generations sure. and the genders are saying about dating. And I completely was with you. Tell I was more. like, I'm, she's I'm so very right. curious to hear from, especially a married man, yeah, um, and a family man, your perspective. Well, I don't have a problem with a woman saying, I want to get as much as I can out of the dating market. Mm -hmm. And I aspire to somebody who owns a company rather than somebody who just works at a company. Mm -hmm. I thought you as a person, you're a multi hyphenate. You're always. Okay. So here comes, here comes all of the work that Ebony, again, I'm just asking the question. Why does she even want a husband? Like to me, a husband would slow her down and you're going to hear it in a second. She's going to say that. She's doing three to five things <laughs> at once. Mm -hmm. So that shows a lot of ambition and a lot of thought and able to flow in lots of different circles. Yeah. If you, sir, mm -hmm. are existing in one circle, mm -hmm. I just drive this bus. There's nothing wrong with driving a bus, but you only do one thing. So you're showing a certain level of ambition, a certain level of comfort mm -hmm. of just doing one thing mm -hmm. rather than being one of those people who's like, I, I need to think of something else and something else and something else. Mm -hmm. I can do more. 
So that's not a very good fit. Somebody who only does this one thing versus somebody who does five, th right? Like, I mean, At the, once, the yeah. people who do five things are kind of. Okay. What happened? For some reason or other. Oh. Mm -hmm. Well, who is he? Mm -hmm. Is he the kind of guy who likes and is able to say, mm -hmm. Let's go to Paris. Fine. Let's go to Jamaica. Let's go to the uh, whatever. Like I have to, I have to know. Yeah. Right. I'm, I'm not sure. Right. Uh, off the bat. I'm like, I'm not sure that we're going to get that. Well, the notion of fit, I think is really important. And I don't think enough time in this broad, like conversation that, that snowballed from bus driver gate. I, I think people like to say things like if he loves his mama and he's a good person and he's a good man and he has good values, but I don't think we're unpacking values right I think so when we say good values what are good values to me might look very different than what are good values to you okay I'm gonna stop real quick I don't think we should limit the whole he loves his mom it takes good I mean there's some internal things Ebony keeps talking about external faith I say external facing attributes how much he makes what does he do? Where's his position and station in life? Those are all external things that don't say anything about who the person is on the inside. Because keep in mind, Ebony can find the, the perfect man. She can marry him. And on their honeymoon, she could get, contract a horrible disease that paralyzes her. All those attributes of that man are not going to matter. If that man doesn't take care of her and doesn't care about her, and is not deeply in love with her, even though he's not going to enjoy her as his wife, like the marital duties uh, afford him, she's going to want that man to, she's going to care so much more about what's inside of him than what he does to provide for her. And the same thing would apply vice versa. He would really want to make sure that she's going to be the type of woman if something happens. And, and I mean, I'm thinking of marriage in the long term. So this is going to be the hand that I'm going to be holding when I close my eyes. This is going to be the, uh, the hand that's going to close my eyes for the last time. These will be the hand that I'll be holding when I put my mom or my dad or whomever in the ground, commit them to the, to the earth. I'm sorry. the, the all those other attributes will not matter. They won't. They're, they won't matter. You won't matter if it was a bus driver's hand that was holding yours or the CEO of the bus company. What you will matter is what will matter to her is the man that's standing next to her. And I keep, I don't understand why Torre, in my opinion, is playing into this game of making it something that it's not or, or, or ignoring the fact of what it is. But let's let her go. Let's go. Someone might say good values. I'll prove it to you. Someone may say good values is someone who gets up in the morning, works their job, sure. works their 40 hours per week, yeah. and retains the majority of their time and energy for their family. Someone might say that is good values. That is. I guarantee you, if Ebony K. Williams waited and found a husband and had a child, she would want she would want that. But watch, watch the example that she gives next. And it is. And also, I would submit good values could be that person that maybe doesn't have as much, you know, quantitative time for um, that love. He knows as she's saying it that this is not going to work because remember, she said she wants a man that meets her there. So let's just say she works 12 hours a day. She wants a 12 hour a day working man. Well, who's going to be there at the house? Who's going to be there? Like what kind of what kind of quality of life situations are you going to have? And I think she knows that. I really do believe that she knows that. It, I'm going to just back up just to taste again so you can see. All right. Watch her facial expressions. Good values. That is. And it is. And also, I would submit good values could be that person that maybe doesn't have as much, you know, quantitative time. Okay, look at her face. For, um, that level of engagement with friends or family, but they're going to get it 
in a different way because they're doing five things at once. They're, you know, they're managing these different things at one particular time. And that's their value system. That might be their value system, but that doesn't coincide with a relationship, a happy, healthy relationship. I just, for the life of me, and, and, and you know what? I'll just be honest. The Lord has saw fit over the last many years to have um, called home or called to rest many of my in-laws, many of my in-laws um, over the 20 years that my wife has I had been married. There's been a lot of a lot of deaths on her side of family and mine as well. You're not going to be thinking about the things that Ebony's talking about when you have to bury a child, when you have to bury a grandparent, when she buries her mother, the Lord willing, she'll be alive to see it. She's going to want that man. Stand. She won't care. I guarantee you, she will not give a flip of a rat's tail. If this was the bus driver or the bus owner, company owner, she's going to care how that shoulder that she's crying and boo-hoo-hooing on, that's all she's going to care about. She don't care what that shoulder was turning the bus wheel or writing the check. She will not care. And I, I just, it just seems so flippant and so shallow to only be concerned about those things as it relates to marriage. But again, they don't have a clear understanding of what marriage is. And I'll show you in a second. Like I had, I have a, a, another best friend um, whose father is an emergency room physician. All right. An ER physician. So that's a high octane. She's about to describe in a second. That's a high octane job. What if the mom also had a high octane job? Just think about it. And so he was not the, the dad that was at dinner every night at six o'clock. But there was a mom though. That's the thing. There was a mom, Ebony. In Ebony's mind, she she said it earlier, he has to meet her where she is. So, and I ask you, do you really think that she would be willing to submit and say, well, my husband now is doing this high octane job and I can come down. Do you really think that? I don't think so. No. Why? Because this was a man who worked uh, three days in a row. So I don't know what the hours is. I went to law school. Not, I don't have an MBA. Okay. But he works three days nonstop yeah. in a row. And then he would That's be off crazy. for two and then back on and back on. And you know, those types of schedules. Mm-hmm. I think that was a man of high values, For sure. but he's probably not going to be well fit with a woman or a man who is preferring of a value system that says we prioritize quality time as a family. Yeah, let's, I mean, but also, what about another, what about a spouse that is high octane like him? What if it was an attorney that was like him or a pilot like him? Again, I, I think we can see like there's going to be a lot of conflict. There's going to be conflict. I think it would be much easier to say, hey, a, a high octane husband and a wife that says, hey, we prioritize family, but we realize that our prioritizing a family will be on those two days that you are off. I think that's that's not even a hard thing to understand. It's not even difficult to comprehend. But let her finish, Jason. But let's you know also be yeah. real that when we have a class mismatch in a relationship, yeah, that can be difficult. Mm-hmm. We can have a hard time if we come from different classes. So Already. we have entirely different approaches to money from where we grew up, even though now we're both middle class or whatever. Mm-hmm. But what you're doing and achieving right? You're upper middle class, right? Mm -hmm. Let's be real. If you're driving a bus, Mm -hmm. you're not upper middle class. You're probably in New York city. You're probably not middle, middle class. No, you're probably working, uh, working class, aspiring to middle class. Yes. Yes. And that is a different world Mm -hmm. and a different language in many ways. Mm -hmm. All those things are outwardly facing what you do. I promise you, Torre is not going to be concerned about any of that stuff. When death comes knocking at his door, he won't. He will not care about any of that stuff. When the inevitable happens, when suffering comes to your door, you will not care about that stuff. Then what you're talking about. And like, let's be real. Marriage begins as an economic institution Mm -hmm. so that wealthy families can combine their wealth and keep it going. Marriage begins as an economic institution Mm -hmm. so that wealthy families can combine their wealth and keep it going. 
Is that what scripture taught us? Is that what Genesis 2 told us? Again, like, I, I have no idea where he got that from. Now, is that a part of how people have used marriage? Absolutely. We actually see that some of those kind of things in scripture. But the initial starting of marriage is here. It has nothing to do about passing wealth down. I have no idea. Again, you can say that that's one of the ways that people have utilized marriage. And I'm not saying that there's not abuses of marriage by no means, but like, what? I don't have no idea. It's actually going to get more interesting in a second. The I mean, notion that's that, already controversial. Too, the right? notion that it should be just about love mm -hmm. and we shouldn't think about how much this person is making or what they might make or their relationship to money. I don't want to marry somebody who is uh, a, an, an uncontrollable spendthrift we don't marry because of love. Who said that we don't talk about money and finances before marriage? Who said that? Nobody did. Again, this is very a very weird type of talk, but let's go. And yeah. we're constantly in, in debt. debt because she can't stay out of, uh, you know, Neiman Marcus Bo or Bloomingdale's yeah. or whatever. Yeah, Barney, yeah. The, you know, like, I mean, come on. Yeah. I think that what you're suggesting, though, is like very rational and very reasonable. And I don't think that's where people tend to land on these conversations. For I'm sure. going to be candid with For you. Sure. I think the notion of even but, suggesting. But, but this is but this was talked about a lot that yeah. what Ianla was suggesting was that you go out of your class mm -hmm. and accept somebody who is in a different class than you. Mm -hmm. And you were saying. No, I want somebody who's in my class yeah. or at least trying to be. And that also loves his mama. And that also, sure. and I think that is another thing that really I think was um, problematic in the way in which the cult, the conversation between Ayala and myself evolved and also the broader conversation. Okay, let me real quick, real quick. I still think Ebony was revising history, but I mean, that is what it is. Notice she said, and now she's throwing in and loves his mama. She she didn't say anything like that before. She she said nothing. Now I'm sure she cares about that stuff. I'm sure, but it's all outward facing, and none of it was inward facing. It was none of it was. She she had standards. She had this goal that she wanted him to to uh, to attain or be at, and that's what she wanted, and that's all she cared about. That's all she said. Right. Is that there's this default uh, silent assumption that people that do better financially are bad people are bad. people. Yeah, I think. And that's what that's when the you watch too many Tyler Perry movies of it all comes into play. <laughs> there's a Tyler Perry shot. I don't I, I don't know anybody that says if you make a lot of money, you're a bad person. I, I don't know. Uh, let me back that up again. I want you all to hear that. And you tell me. I, I've I've not heard anybody say that. Of his mama. And that also, sure. and I think that is another thing that really I think was um, problematic in the way in which the cult, the conversation between Ayanla and myself evolved, and also the broader conversation, right? Is that there's this default uh, silent assumption that people that do better financially are bad people. Are bad people. Yeah. I think, and that's what, that's when the you watch too many Tyler Perry movies of it all comes <laughs> into play, right? Okay. I, I don't feel that way at all. I think. I don't, I, I never said it. And I don't think if, if you feel that way, then, you know, stand on it, I guess. But that's not my position. I, I don't think that, I don't think Torre or um, Ebony K. Williams are bad people. They they sure, certainly make more money, more money than I do. I don't think they're bad people by any means or measure at all. I think they're, they're honorable. I think they're, they're, they're doing, they're using their talents and gifts in a, in a good way to, no, no way, no way at all. I don't know who says that. I really don't. Maybe somebody does, maybe there's an idea, but I don't, I don't believe that. I don't believe. Yeah. This notion that if oh, you, oh, that, that poorer people are inherently, better, inherently good better people. people. And Never. I think that I if we're no going to go deep, deep, I think this is very like black Christian church, right? Like, I think mm. I, I, I'm, I'm not the best with my Bible, but there's some kind of scripture that says something around the, take of it's harder for a camel to go through the mm -hmm. eye of a, a needle, needle than for a rich, rich man, man to get into heaven. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of us are still very much there. Okay. I wanted to let that part play because this is something, a, a weird phenomenon. And I actually had to get on the phone with my pastor 
today about this because I've, I've seen it multiple times and I, I hadn't paid attention to it. And what it is, is this idea, this notion of somebody who's not a Christian quoting the scriptures for authority's sake. And we've all seen it. We've all heard people do it. And today, I don't know why I just, it really, I finally heard it and was like, why is she doing that? You don't live according to the scriptures. So why are you quoting the scriptures? And we kind of came to the conclusion that because deep down inside, they recognize that the Bible is true and it does rep represent a, a level of authority, even though they themselves reject that authority. And maybe, I mean, we've all seen it. We've seen people who are abject, disobey, disobedient to scriptures, and they'll quote scripture or say, you know, the Bible says, da, 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 da. And you kind of want, it, it's probably weirded you out, but you never really said anything about it. So here in this situation, clearly they understand that the scriptures represent authority. And so therefore they're using it kind of like a book of quotations. Like, let me find a good, a good quotation that supports this idea because the book of authority is giving me this quotation. That's why she's not using the Quran. That's why she's not using Shakespeare or a recipe book or anything else because those don't represent authority, but she represents and recognizes the scriptures, God's word to be authoritative. The only problem is she's not submitting to it authoritatively, but let's go. So then when you start to do better financially, when you start to have the the the, the JD and the MBA, and then by the way, it's not just about the degrees because I've dismissed many a mediocre lawyer, but that's another conversation for, sure. for another day. You for know, sure. yeah. right. The reality that needs to be said out loud. Okay, now let's, let me bring in just one thing I want to show. And before we get too far, because here, Ebony is going to kind of backtrack about some of her thoughts on when women should get married and how, how they should pursue college, so on and so forth. But I want to point out here, this is Ephesians 5, 22 through 33. And I asked you earlier, do you think Ebony would like actually submit to a husband? So let me just read it to you. And then you kind of play it out because... This is a, most people would probably recognize this as being a perfect example of the husband-wife dynamic. Wives, submit to your husbands as to the Lord, for the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, his body, and he is himself its savior. Now, as the church submits to Christ, so also wives should submit in everything to their husbands. But Jason, wait, 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 wait. What about the husband? Not a problem. Listen to what he says. Husbands, love your wives. And notice here, I do want to just add a little caveat. That word L-O-V-E is not some goosebump feelings. It's not the butterflies in your stomach. Listen to what it says. As Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her, that he might sanctify her, having cleansed her by the washing of water with the word, so that he might present the church to himself in splendor without spot or wrinkle or any such thing, that she might be holy and without blemish. In the same way, husbands should love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself, for no one ever hated his own flesh, but nourishes it in cherishes it just as Christ does the church because we are members of his body. Therefore, a man shall leave his father and mother and hold fast to his wife and the two shall become one flesh. This is a mystery. This mystery is profound. And I am saying that it refers to Christ and the church. However, let each one of you love his wife as himself and let the wife see that she respects her husband. That's the reason and purpose for marriage. That's the reason why we have marriage. So let us continue. So I just want to finish this up. Let's let Ebony go. Is that as black men age, 
their desirability increases. Thus, their optionality of women is always expanding. And the exact opposite is true for black women. Mm -hmm. As we age, doesn't matter how much money we accumulate, our degrees or professional accolades, the reality is, is that our marriage and partnership market value is depreciating with every passing year. And speaking of fertility, that is another reason that I want younger black women to seek marriage and partnership in college or right after if that's what they choose. So here's my advice. If you are a young black woman in college and you know in your heart and in your head that you want to prioritize family, I suggest that you simultaneously pursue that MRS degree right along with that BA or JD. But anyways, I think that we tend to default oh, to a to. posture of if you I wanted to bring that in just because Ebony caused more stir when she said, because this is actually a backtrack on other things that she had said as it relates to the female male dynamics, as it relates to marriage and pursuing your degree and, and all of that kind of stuff. It is kind of a backtrack and it almost seems like a backtrack to even what she said in the beginning of the video. So let's let her done, get done so we can finish up. If you earn too much, if you do too well in this category, you must be. You must That's be abusive, but, but, but I think we see it Torre. Wait, what is the, what was the response to, cause that was a hugely viral moment beyond it's still existing. You know, So what, what did it feel like? And what did you hear coming back at you from the culture? Yeah. A lot. You said about yeah, it, yeah, 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 yeah. I'll let you on, but and, I saw. And also I hear you. And also I already know that if I'm going to approach a woman at your station in life, pun intended, right? So for as much as Ayanla and the conversation focused on my rejection of this mythical bus driver, yeah. this mythical bus driver would likely reject me as well because my interest very well might be off-putting to him because I am a workaholic. Because I am constantly building and thinking of different ways and um, paradigms to advance my business. I was here for two seconds, met. Yeah, Chris, yeah. Runs you know, yeah. wheels are spinning. How annoying see, is I, that to somebody that it, that doesn't function that way? See, this is what I'm talking about. That I See, I, and that's why I brought up Ephesians 5. Like, I don't see her being able to recognize a husband's role in her life and submit under that. I don't see that. And please understand the word submit doesn't mean doormat or get walked on or has no value. So just save that. Don't even put that in the comments. I don't see her doing that. And even more than that, why do you want a husband? Why would you even want one? Because everything she's talking about is external facing. She did do the, the, she did a hat tip to loves his mom, but ask yourself like, where where was that in the in the grand scheme of things? I see you as half of a power couple, mm -hmm. and not mm. like with a man who's like you know I have a nice little job I'm 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 cool in this little space of the world. And Mainly, you're like yeah, because you're I like, think I would be. Do you want to run for mayor? Mayor? Because I'm well, support we, you. Listen, I'm what we're doing, team. and I think that is. Or I might run for mayor. You gonna support me? <laughs> <laughs> well, oh, and it's God, also like control. listen, I Charlemagne asked me one time on the Breakfast Club separate interview, like, what do you bring to the table? Right. This is you, yes. Ebony. Yes. And I wasn't offended because I think, actually thought it was legitimate, Torrey, because I don't think you can assume that just because somebody has these letters behind their name or this check that that is. No. What do I bring? I will tell you one of the most valuable things I think I bring to a, part, a romantic partnership, Torrey. If you are a man and you are truly desirous, and I'm speak, speaking very specifically, if you are truly desirous of being the very best maximized version of yourself, you could not have a better partner than me. I will get you there. I, pr I put my life on that. But if you are a man and you are looking to kind of find a point of comfort and that I am probably not the best suit for you because I'm going to push you to the brink. You. But is that what a wife is supposed to do? I'm not. And I'm not saying that you don't inspire your husband to do great things. My wife has inspired me to do more things than I probably would have done on my own. I probably should have listened to her more on some other things and I probably could have done more. But is that like, like she's literally saying, I'm getting in here to push you to something else. But is that what you're supposed to do though? I'm just wondering, maybe I'm wrong. Down in the comment section, let me know if I'm wrong. I don't see how this would fare 
in a realistic relationship because you saw you already heard the type of man that she's looking for. I just don't see how this would pan out. Or could I? Okay, you're gonna make your man better. Yeah, I mean that's the only way I know how to do it. Like, if you are my best friend, you are my sorority sister, you are my homegirl, and you say, "Sis, I want to go into uh, personal finance advancement." Honey, sit down. But we about to we about to make the game plan. We about to work it out. Mm-hmm. We're about to see who we know. You look through your phone. I'm looking through my phone. We're gonna I'm gonna get you there. I'm not the person to talk about pipe dreams to, because I don't do pipe dreams. I'm an executor. So what what it is that you want out of life from a philanthropic place, from a civic place, from a financial place, from a personal growth place. I want to work on my childhood trauma. Let me tell you about the Hoffman Institute, honey. It's life changing. I'm a graduate. Let me let me introduce you to some class. Like I just I'm an I am an I have a bias towards action, Torre. And And it's something that I think is of enormous value. But if your values aren't aligned with that and you are someone who kind of prefers to be in a place of comfort, I will be fit. the most hellacious partner you ever met in your life. Yeah. Because I don't do comfort. You're asking me to be something I don't want to be. Correct. Versus like you want me to, you want somebody who's going to lift you up. I'm going to help lift oh, you up. Oh, honey. If you're trying to go there, I am the best thing God ever made. That, that is a deep preference. What are the things that turn your head in a man? Mm-hmm. What do you want to mm-hmm. see? I want I'm going to say this for a second. Look, I, I, I have no no problem with encouraging your husband to to better. But remember also, she herself, she's already said she's a workaholic. She's already said that she wants her husband, her man to meet her at a certain level. So he can't be below that level. So she's going to push. What would be the purpose of it, though? Only asking. Like, what would be the purpose of, let's just say, Ebony K. Williams is making $500,000 a year. What would be the purpose of her pairing up with a man that's also making $500,000 a year? In order to do that, he's going to probably be a workaholic as well. He's going to probably be a high-octane man as well. What's the benefit of that? Like, why do you even want that? Just wondering. All right, let's go. I see a man who uses his privilege for good. I'm talking about aesthetically. Yes, I'm talking about yes, I'm talking about aesthetically. When you you walk, so in if a, you're asking me who looks good to me right now, like in the in the universe, uh, Col- I, Coleman Domingo. I'm not. I'm not, I'm not necessarily <laughs> asking you to name individuals. Oh, okay, because we can do that. I'm. <laughs> you ready to do that, boy. But I know that know. there are things that grab shot. me right. about okay. women. I'm sure there are things that grab you. I look for a man who people are gravitating towards. This is and not women right necessarily. I'm looking, I'm looking for the leader of the pack. So I am attracted to a man. He could be five nine. Like there's a man in real life right now who, on a good day, he might be five nine. But when he's in the room, everybody's almost lining up literally to get some time with him. All right. So that was the end of that. And all right. So that was the end of that. And I just thought it was a super interesting dialogue hopefully you enjoyed that and at really at the end of the day I, I i take nothing away from ebony k williams i think she's uh she seems like a very intelligent woman and i do i you know i pray that things go well for her in her pursuit of um motherhood i pray that her motherhood waits until she becomes a wife and then brings a child into the world but um and Torre, I, I have no problem with either of them. I'm not saying anything bad about them. I'm only pointing out some issues that I saw as it relates to what does the Bible say about marriage? And what is the purpose? What's the benefit? What's the intention that the Lord had in putting together marriage? Because I'm seeing a trend here. God has a standard here. God has a definition here. Once man starts cutting and pasting and redacting and whiting out parts of the definition and changing it uh, according to what we think, things get really, really weird. And there's no reason to, to stick with what God has done. So anyway, that was it. I hope that you all enjoyed it. Down in the comment section, let me know what you thought. And this is going to be an exclusive for my Buy Me A Coffee. So I thank you all so much, so very much for your support of the channel. Thank you so much for what you do to help me out, especially my members. Thank you so very much. If you have questions, comments, or concerns, please feel free to follow me at um, 
buymeacoffee.com forward slash.